The Natural History Museum is the latest LEGO product in the Modular Buildings collection, thank you LEGO for sending it. A model that stands out against previous modular buildings in many ways, most of them good from a personal standpoint, though reading through the comments on my reveal video some complaints were brought up a couple times by several people, so let's talk about it. As most modular buildings the sides and the back are quite plain, except for a drain pipe leaking some water resulting in a flower sprouting, a trash crate in dark blue with some elements to display a little scene at the front and the entrance to the museum's lab that I'll show later in the video. The facade is of course the highlight of the building and there's actually lots to look at. First the 1x6 tile with the printed museum in there above the entrance door recessed a bit between the two Greek styled columns. Something very iconic if you think about real life museums as is the pediment at the top, the triangular shaped roof structure. Both the columns and the roof were great details to build as far as building techniques go, so look forward to that when you build yours. All window frames are dark brown and you get a bunch of them, including the large door element framed by the 10 colored assemblies that we can more easily see if we take out all of the extras in the way. The studs at the top of the first floor windows do bother me as it makes the window feel incomplete, so I would either have kept the roundness the top floor windows have or I would have figured out a way to have these be a continuous thing from top to bottom with the use of bricks or something else. While I like these so called extras it's easier to appreciate a building like this I think and it may be a good time to talk about the predominant color that is the olive green. I really don't have any issues with it, kinda reminds me of the Parisian restaurant, my first modular ever, though people seem to disagree and would have preferred more museum like colors like grey or tan. And while I get where people are coming from, LEGO will never do an all grey modular building, it simply isn't in its DNA and as for tan, I'm not really sure it would work without a major overhaul of the whole thing. These break lines from the first floor grey tiling and the second floor white layering do bother me and I would probably have preferred this to be all olive green for consistency's sake. Placing back the extras, the ones that stand out the most are the plastic foils for the banners highlighting the current exhibits of the museum. Explore the future, the space exhibit and go back in time, the paleontology exhibit, featuring a lego brachiosaurus that looks like the one featured in that Jurassic Park lego set. There's a big cherry blossom tree that slightly hides the banner away, under which lies one of two statues using the same torso print as the elven statues from the Rivendell lego set. The brick built black fences were done with a combination of lots of these elements which was a bit repetitive to build but made for far better looking fences when compared to pre-molded fence elements LEGO already has. Next to the second statue there's a seat and a mailbox, some flowers and plants back there and up in the second floor a window washing elevator where we can place the janitor of the museum that, by the way, is the minifigure counterpart of the set's model designer. He is one out of seven minifigures included with two of them being the museum employees with a brand new torso and troubled alternate face prints that match the disaster that happens inside. There's an elderly woman that likes to feed the birds at the front, mother and child getting ready for a day at the museum with the mother having the prosthetic leg element. Finally the museum curator minifigure that looks like a reference to Dr. Kilroy, a character from the adventurer's theme, something I would like for Lego to do a revival of in the same way as they did Castle, Space and Pirates recently. As opposed to previous modules buildings the museum's roof is quite interesting and not plain at all. I quite like the micro figures built into the roof as statues, the skylights built sideways were a great building detail and feature lots of the curved window frame element in black and on the back there's a telescope for the curator to observe the stars, a door leading inside and another leading to the curator's study. The back wall can be removed for an easier time accessing the interior of the study which doesn't have a whole lot of space but packs plenty of detail still, including the iconic printed treasure map tile as well as the compass or the typewriter printed slope. The study also has a skylight at the top and looking at the exposed back wall you can kinda see the ingenious ways the outside shape was achieved. But now it's time to finally look inside. The build splits into the roof and two floors, as opposed to three floors most modular buildings have. At the entrance there's a gift shop with some 
items for purchase, including a few attached to a removable back wall, making it far easier to see and access both the bathroom and the museum's lab, complete with a clever four-piece microscope. The removable wall has a few bones and clock for the lab side and two extra toilet paper rolls for the bathroom. To the left there's a pottery collection, with one being broken to pieces in the middle of the floor, the reason the museum employees were so alarmed. On the geology corner there's a geode, stalagmite and quartz in a corner, a volcano model, as well as a cross-section of planet Earth featuring its different layers. The model designer of this set has never heard of Lego stair elements and so he always uses brick-built stairs in unique ways, with one of such examples being the ones from the police station modular. This here is no different where a bunch of slopes assembled together like these, placed at a 45 degree angle, make for a super clever building technique I enjoyed quite a lot. The paleontology exhibit is however one of the museum's main attractions, because of the Brachiosaurus skeleton. You can remove it from its place, making it easier to appreciate. It should have been bigger if we were to compare it to the Brachiosaurus from the Jurassic Park set, but works as is nonetheless. Despite the flimsy look, the build is quite stable, made with lots of unconventional piece choices that do work great together, with my favorite being the white bananas for the rib cage bones. I would have preferred the clip elements to also be white, as I find the great spots a bit distracting, but that's an easy fix if you have the pieces. Still in the paleontology exhibit, there's a pair of dinosaur eggs, a fossilized saber-toothed tiger skull, a fossil and a coprolite, the cool name for what's basically fossilized poop. It may be hard to notice, but there's different heights on the floor plan, and some of the raised levels have hidden secrets you'll only notice when building the set. Remnants of a dinosaur skeleton below the gift shop, and a piece of cheese under the geology collection, accessed through a small hole here if you take this bench away. Very cool. Placing the second floor matches the columns outside, which is satisfying, and due to the Brachiosaurus skeleton being so tall, it can be seen through the mezzanine. But the cool thing in this floor is the crazy amount of references to classic LEGO themes and products, starting with pirates with the minifigure hat and ship model I can't accurately reference, forest man with a micro-scaled forest man's eyedot set, and castle with the iconic reference to the LEGO yellow castle set. In the middle section this globe with a rocket feels like a work in progress classic space logo next to a rocket model with blue platform, kinda reminding me of the Alpha 1 rocket base. On the opposite side of this there's a model of an up-to-date solar system, meaning there's no Pluto, with cool building techniques all around, especially the one for the rings of Saturn, and at the end of the room, blocked access to the stairs that lead to the museum's curator study in the roof, with an asteroid model to be seen, an old telescope on the wall, and a model of a space base, featuring classic space Lego sets Galaxy Explorer, Space Command Center, and Space Buggy. If we trust the subtle references showcased in the instruction booklet, telling us little snippets of information and references throughout the old build. Even though I'm not that into the classic LEGO themes, I love the effort made into including all of these details that everyone will appreciate regardless, but seasoned LEGO fans that much more. The fact that it went up to 48 studs, as opposed to the 32 studs base every other modular building had, except for assembly square, makes for less cramped rooms, easier access and more space for detail, and larger building features, old modulars can't fit. Focusing on a single building rather than trying to fit different ones in a small floor plan feels to me like a good change of pace that I'd like to LEGO revisit sometimes in the future. Not to say this is my preferred way of seeing modular buildings going forward, but because it adds diversity on the modular street. In some ways, because the choices to make the Natural History Museum a single and wider building has me thinking that this is one of very few modular buildings that can work pretty well as a standalone model, rather than having to be connected with a bunch of the other ones to make sense, not forcing upon oneself the need to collect them all, though let's be real here, it's really hard to stop after you got yourself your first modular building, right? 
the Natural History Museum has little over 4,000 parts, making it the biggest ever within the modular buildings collection, just 12 pieces bigger than Assembly Square, with close to 150 extras by the way, and retails for $300, which is great value in my eyes when you compare it to IP related products that never see this kind of price per piece ratios. Another thing that sets this one apart is that you can actually already pre-order it from LEGO, getting you a free gift with purchase Galileo Galilei set if you do it before the 16th of November, and it will ship December 1st, as well as also being available for purchase on physical LEGO stores on that date, which is very uncommon, as for the past years you'd only be able to get your hands on the newest modular buildings on the 1st of January. I really like this one, and aside from my nitpicks in regards to the unfinished look on the first floor, or windows or the jarring lines going across the building, this is one of my favorite modular buildings at the moment. And this is coming from someone who doesn't care all that much about storytelling, which this set has a lot of, with the French bulldog running away with the dinosaur bone, the unsolved mystery behind the broken pottery item, the hidden references, hidden builds, poop jokes and so much more. It does not beat the jaw-dropping feelings I had when I built my first ever set of this series, Parisian Restaurant, and it isn't as impressive of a building experience and color coordination as the Beauty Hotel, but in my eyes rightfully deserves a third or fourth place on the list.